I begin my journey at the Chopin Airport in Warsaw. My backpack weighs 8 kilos. I have a DSLR camera and a flashlight. It's 1st of November. Winter is near and I want to cheat the aura because I spend the whole summer working like a dog and I feel racked of freedom. I am boarding airplane to Vietnam. The first few days after landing flashed in front of my eyes like an advertisement on the outdoor screen. I am stunned by this place. Never resting people and omnipresent scooters. Southeast Asia. Jet lag, parties, new friends, exotic smells, tastes and colors. My plan is to travel from north to south, from Hanoi to Saigon. I have a month to do this. It should be enough. Backpacking is unpredictable. And when you travel solo, you never know how interesting people you will meet on your way. Over the next couple of weeks, my companions will be Domi, Johan and Joffre. It is difficult to tell about such an interesting country in just a few minutes, so please, think of this video as a moving postcard. Me and my new travel companions from France are leaving Hanoi. We are heading to Kadba Island. Is it okay so I can uh, I can stay my my story? Yeah, you can. So tell me your story I, about I am French and uh, this is a French oh, nurse. It's and, a camera. Uh, I met I met her and uh, uh, she she's a very she, very she's very, she's nurse, very cute yeah. nurse and uh, I wanted to um, to have some affection from her so I do this on purpose and uh, mm -hmm. and now she's taking care of me sometimes. He says. Uh, he says. Uh, do you like my? <laughs> 150 kilometers from Hanoi, partly by buses, partly by ferry, takes us 10 hours. The roads are bad and very crowded. There is 90 million inhabitants in Vietnam. And I think everyone who has learned to walk is riding a scooter. The weather is perfect. My outfit, t-shirts, shorts, flip-flops, even in the night. The sky is overcast but it's not raining. Views from the ferry compensate us slow bus ride. We think about a good meal and an evening swim in the South China Sea. We are approaching Kadba. It's the largest of over 300 islands in the Halong Bay. Tourist season hasn't started yet. Empty, but open hotels and restaurants encourage with low prices. People are nice, friendly and helpful. The food is delicious and very varied. Fresh seafood, poultry, pork, beef, vegetables, fruits, leaves, sauces, spices. The list goes on. Kadba today. We left Hanoi yesterday and we are doing a bicycle with two people on the bike, so it's very funny. We 
We rent tandem bikes. We are laughing stock between locals because we choose to pedal over easy scooter cruising. Island looks like from Jurassic Park movie. Soft mounds of limestone mountains are covered with dense forest. Roads are meander up and down between the hills. In every corner of the island we find something interesting. Small villages with wide open houses, running carefree children, fishing huts. Jeffrey and Domi decided to visit mountains of Sapa in the north of the Vietnam. Me and Johan, we are rent a scooter and we continue to exploring the island. Okay, this is uh, Mangrova and uh, Mangrova is extremely important for, the, for our life because it maintains a high level of biodiversity and um, they are dealing with waters, salt waters, and they are removing like uh, all the metals and all the bad stuff you can find into the water. Every day I feel better and better, safe and welcome. I can feel here universal respect for others and interest in our presence. With each day I feel more bliss in my soul. Sometimes I take pictures, sometimes I do nothing. I am resting. On the sixth day in Vietnam, we set out to Ninh Binh. The city is noisy and not very charming, so we treat it as a base camp. In the evening, I watch Vietnamese television. We are on the, our way to Cuc Phong National Park where we hope to see lemurs today and some monkeys and uh, we traveling from Ninh Binh and uh, we had really really bad map but we now we okay we get from the hotel personnel a puzzle map that leads us to nowhere this way we have a chance to visit surrounding villages this has its charms but after a few hours on scooter my ass is killing me, and I dream of a decent bowl of full soup. This is called uh, blue dragon fruit. It's very good. It's very good. In the afternoon we arrive to the park where in the heart of the jungle we book accommodation. We and a few employees we are the only guests in the park. Jungle mesmerized me with the sounds. In this evergreen forest are growing more than 2,000 species of trees braided with countless other plants. There are over 300 species of birds, unknown to me insects and other life forms. Unfortunately, larger animals have been wiped out by the men. Tigers, crocodiles are no longer here.
However, the ubiquitous and incredibly noisy cicadas, well hidden in the thickness of the magical forest, are doing okay. How they call it? Lien in French. Yeah, Liana in my language. But it's very hard, it's like a, it feels like a wood. But if you do this, you can see it's really really long, like maybe I don't know 20 meters or more. It's like a rope. It's amazing, huh? Very elastic. And if you don't have friends, get a pet. Pets love you eternally. At the end, we visited the monkey breeding center supported by the Frankfurt Zoo. Through the effort of volunteers, endangered prime resource center keeps alive the last of the native to this land, species of langurs and gibbons. Paradoxically, the monkeys look to their natural environment from the perspective of the cages and they can't release them into the wild. They would be quickly hunted for the shamanic medicines, aphrodisiacs or food. Judge it for yourself, watching monkeys living in the cages isn't cool. So we're in uh, Trangan and we're going for the boat trip uh, to see caves and some other stuff. This is my new friend from Vietnam. What's your name? Trangan boat trip. The next day weather is nice. So we rent a scooter again and we set off for a trip. I still have the map puzzle, but richer for the previous day's experience, I found charming Trangan with no problem. We rent a boat and we burn in the sun, while our paid lady is rowing across the lake. For a dinner, we traditionally order rice. This country is one of the world leaders in rice production. Three times a year, they harvest more than 40 million tons of it. Rice fields are everywhere. Rice is cultivated by hand, without the use of any machines. According to what people here saying, rice is a gift from God. It tastes great. We travel 600 kilometers from Ninh Binh to Hue at night. Sleeping buses are very popular in Vietnam. Traffic after dark is much easier and the bus itself quite comfortable for a person with a small height. People travel on reclining seats in three rows.
Okay, so we are in uh, Hue. Hue. Today we uh, we are united with Domi again. We arrived in Hue yesterday with the sleeping bus. It was an interesting um, uh, trip, trip with uh, <laughs> many people, many grandmas, short grandma, like in the alley, etc. We found back uh, Domitil. So we hope today it will be better than yesterday. So we will visit like this big um, imperial, imperial city, city training a lot. Like it's quite uh, usual in this part of Vietnam and uh, we will go to a pagoda and we will go to a market. Look how it's getting better, huh? Oh. Big because, zoom. Because, because I have my nurse back. We crossed the 17 parallel, which divided Vietnam into two parts. Since now, we'll have a better infrastructure and street vendors with even greater passion for sales. At every turn we find scraps from the war with the Americans. Every few hours is raining. The air is humid and hot, but it doesn't bother us in exploring the forbidden purple city. Hue is the former capital of the Wen Empire. Wen Emperor was a very active man with many, many concubines. That is why half of the Vietnamese has Wen surname. From over 100 palace buildings survived only 20. Many armies systematically destroyed the symbol of the independence of Vietnam. Only recently the authorities understood the importance and tourist potential of this place and started the process of restoration. A few miles out of the town, we visit Tin Mu Pagoda. There is probably the world's only car relic, a witness of the monk's self-immolation. His name was Tik Wang. This is very famous car because in 63 one of the monks was taken by this car to Saigon and he burned himself to death as a protest for the political situation at that time. We boat back to the city. Rivers in this country are inseparable part of the landscape. Rivers irrigate and fertilize the soil and you can travel by them. The boat, rented by us, is a source of income for one of the many local families. Hue is full of life. Everyone is in a hurry to be on time and finish with their business before dark. At this latitude, the sun rises and sets around 6, same throughout the year. Smells and sounds are mixed with each other, as in Amok. Hoi An is a jewel on my journey. It's one of the few undamaged by war cities with well-preserved architecture. The town developed as a part of the spice trade and has always been multicultural. Hoi An means quiet meeting place and so it is today, especially at night when the streets filling up with music and the lights of the lanterns. Tourists wander in search of a restaurant or bar Vietnamese women offer lanterns. Each night 
is a festival of lights which cast a glow on the facades of Indochina buildings. In the evenings, I walk city streets alone. I am on my own again. Johan, Domi, I'm going to miss you. Nia Chan is a city of clubs, bars and hotels. The beach goes on for kilometers. What else? Just relax and dolce far niente. Sometimes you need a break from sightseeing. After several hours of driving towards the border of Cambodia, I found Dalat Mountains. Vietnam has discovered another face. If not for the red color of the soil, I would feel in the local woods just like at home. I climbed mountains covered with pines growing on the Lang Bieng Plateau. Below me, are endless fields of coffee. We are in Lang Bien uh, Park. And what is very interesting about this place is uh, now we are like pine forest, which looks uh, same like in Europe. But 50 years ago, you could find here many, many exotic animals like tigers, rhinos. Hey there, I'm Bernard from the Netherlands and we are on the Din Lang Bian mountain right now. It's on like 2170, 67 meters. 
Uyuyacağım Jeroz Beşli Bu parça iskreci Kaçış Volkı İsmu Tegmaş Volkı Przecież mnie kochasz na życie Sama mówisz przeszłego At the end of my trip, I decided to stay at the seaside Munye. This fishing village is changing into a seaside resort, which Russians are very fond of. Because it's still before tourist season, I managed to get a good price for the apartment with pool and a sea view. From my window I look at the fishermen, who spend long hours immersed in the sea. I wonder if they receive phone calls during the business hours. There is always time for the quick cigarette. Maybe their friend from the timber boat deals with administrative matters. While the men end catching seafood, their wives prepare family restaurants for the evening feast. Lobster here is fresh, cheap and delicious. In the evening, over a glass of locally brewed whiskey, I admire the sunset and unknown to me stars constellations. Slowly, I understand that my Vietnamese adventure is coming to an end. The last days of my trip I spent in Saigon. I'm hanging around the streets, visiting museums and palace of the non-existent president of the South Republic. <laughs> I will hunker for the atmosphere of this country. Crazy traffic, immune to refusal street vendors, offers of the cheap scooter and rickshaw ride, as well as the beautiful beaches, mountains and dense jungles. I will miss local cuisine with countless number of flavors. Above all, I will miss cheerful and smiling Vietnamese who made me feel in their country safe and welcome. Tưởng đau khổ chung 